Hey guys, Travis with T-Customs Productions, tcustoms.com. Today we are in part three of the how to sample in Ableton Live 9 series. We're gonna be utilizing the Akai MPD32 mini controller drum pad to demonstrate, basically building off of what we did in part one and part two. Now you can apply what we touch here to other Akai controllers, whether it's another MPD, and a MPK series, or other controller altogether for that matter. But again, I'll just be demonstrating on the MPD32. Just to recap real briefly on what we covered in part one, one and two in part one we just got in and showed you how you can use the slice the new midi track feature to chop up your samples and start making your sample based production right away it was really quick straight to the point tutorial in part two we went into some more advanced features on how we can create a custom slice preset we set up options like a global transpose and attack choke group and some other settings as well that way you have full control over the samples and it makes your life a lot easier when you go to make your beats like I said, today we're just gonna be building off of what we touched on in those last two videos. So if you haven't seen them, or you'd like to go back just to refresh, links will be in the description or somewhere on this video and you can catch up on those last videos. So now that we're to this point and we have our sample sliced in a drum rack, we have our custom slice preset, now we wanna know how can we take advantage of the MIDI controller, utilize some of the features that the MIDI controller has. The first thing you wanna make sure with any MIDI controller, in particular with this MPD32, is to make sure that your controller is configured properly to work with Live 9, so that way you unlock all of the features and functionality that you're gonna want, and we're gonna describe some of here in a little bit. I've got this MIDI controller plugged in through USB, and when I plugged it in, Ableton Live went ahead and detected automatically uh, the controller and the configuration of the controller. Now, I remember in Ableton Live 8, I think I had to manually configure my controller, but either way, you just wanna double check to make sure that Ableton is seeing the controller right. So you just wanna come up here to Options, and you wanna click on Preferences, and make sure that you see your control surface here. So as you can see in the past, I've connected my MPK49, and recently just connected my MPD32, and I didn't set any of this up. Ableton automatically did it. If you have your controller connected and you don't see it here, just make sure that it's it's set up properly. For now, I'm just gonna leave these at the default settings that, that Ableton had set up. Once Ableton's seen your controller correctly and it's configured properly, you wanna make sure that you have the right preset, the controller preset, to work with the doll that you're using. With the MPD32, there's a preset button, which is this button right here. I don't know if you're able to see this too well, but it's gonna be pretty straightforward to follow. You're just gonna click this preset button. And then we're gonna use this knob right here to turn and scroll through all of our presets. You might see Reason, Cubase, Sonar, I'm just reading off some of the presets. You can actually get in here and create custom presets too, which is not of the scope of what we're gonna to do today. But on my controller, preset one is the live light preset. And once we have that selected, we just wanna hit on top of this button, it says push to enter, and make sure that this is this preset is set on live light. Once we have it set on live light and we have our controller that's configured in Ableton, we're now ready to explore some of the features that Ableton gives us with the MPD32 controller. So now once that's synced up, one of the cool things now you can do is you can actually hit play, record, and stop directly from your controller. If I hit the record, I'm able to now trigger that directly in live. I got stop, play, and forward and back. And now you've also unlocked some really cool features with your knobs and your faders as well, which I'm gonna talk about in just a second. If you're coming from an MTC background, you may be used to shuffling through banks in order to shift your sample. You shift up to bank B, and now you've got 16 new samples, and you keep shifting that way. That's obviously one way that you can access more than 16 samples that you may have chopped up. But now all you have to do is drag up this pad overview and now, based off of what's being viewed right here in the drum rack, it will auto map that. And if I had samples even on up higher, starting at E6, it would trigger that based off of what's highlighted right here in this pad overview. That's something I take advantage of, especially in cases when I have a lot of samples that are spread out everywhere. I can just easily shift up and down here and have access to any bank that I need at a given time. And then one of the last things I wanna to touch on really quickly that will help expedite your workflow and give you access to some of these settings that we had set up in the last video is a temporary MIDI map. You may be familiar with setting up a global MIDI map where you, you click this MIDI up here and you figure out what setting that you wanna map and you figure out what controller or what uh, knob or fader you wanna put it on. But what's really cool about having this live light preset enabled is the ability to do kind of like a temporary MIDI map. And what I mean by that is if I select this drum rack right here, if I click right up here at this top and I have this selected, 
These eight macros will auto map to your K1 through K8 knobs on the MPD32. Only when this is selected, if I now turn the K1 knob, you'll see the transpose shifting. I can now manipulate the pitch of my samples directly from the MPD controller without even having to set up a global MIDI map. And the same with any of these other macros that you might set up. So if I'm listening to my samples, I say maybe that's not the speed and pitch that I want, so I'll And then I can go over to my attack. Again, like I mentioned in the last video, I really encourage you to get in here and explore some of these settings that the drum rack and the sampler, and even the simpler instrument have to offer. Hopefully this was helpful to all of you guys who are sampling in Ableton Live and using the MPD32 controller. If this video was helpful, please like and share, subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching, peace.